putting our children first. Thank you, Mr. Well Speaker. I call Barbara Thurston. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it's a pleasure to take a call uh, on this. Uh, topic this afternoon around the budget policy statement. Now, we've just heard from the previous speaker about measuring it and measuring everything. And I think, you know, it's, it's all very well to talk about measuring it, but when we ask, what are you going to do? How are you going to measure it? What are the details? We're never getting told what they are, so we don't actually know how you're going to measure it because you haven't actually said, you don't like, the, this government doesn't like targets. And I also, have, uh, I also have a statement for the last speaker. Is a budget is not what the government has done. The last speaker kept referring to what the government has done. What the government has done has referred to it in a budget policy statement. The bu no, but the budget policy statement, the last speaker was talking about what this government has done. The government has put a budget policy statement in place, and it's full of opaqueness. Yep. And I've also heard a colleague of mine, my colleague next to me here, Denise Lee, talking about the serious uncertainty. And I can tell you that what you've got on the piece of paper that was just held up, uh, Karen McAnulty, is a statement. But the public are not buying that statement because there is serious uncertainty and there is opaqueness in it. So that statement came out on the 14th of December. That was over two months ago. So yes, we can have Christmas and we can have New Year and this government is up to its 100 days. In fact, it's 28 days almost, not quite, but almost 28 days past its 100 days. So do we have to wait for Easter? before we get any, uh, we, uh, we've had Christmas, New Year, do we have to wait for Easter? We want the how. We don't know how we can measure stuff when this government's not prepared to set targets. And we've already uh, aware that Treasury's uh, got 29 fiscal uh, bombs waiting to happen, time bombs within this statement, Mr McAnulty. So there's major policies like the Provincial Growth Fund, extra dock funding, justice policies, primary health care policies, new rail links, and all this uh, talk about employment relations, increasing the minimum wage, and the populations out there going, how on earth is this government going to be able to afford all the things that they've promised in this budget policy, policy statement? So they're actually this government's convincing themselves. They haven't yet uh, convinced the Treasury, and the Treasury's got serious concerns about this. So it's ambitious. Why is it ambitious? Because this government has no idea how it's going to achieve its wish list. And there are a whole host of committees that have been put in place to try and discover uh, how this government is going to achieve its, its wish list. And now we're seeing reports of putting an inquiry and a committee in to make an inquiry into the committees that have been set up. So, you know, it's just, um, it's like the song that never ends. So, yes, it does identify in this statement, as some of the members have rightly talked about, you know, the tertiary education package. Well, yeah, the tertiary education package has been put in place. Uh, half the surplus that was around at that time has been allocated to this ter tertiary education package. We are hearing that it's having very little impact on the number of students, so there's going to be a target and a measure. That's a target. That's a target that we've got on this side of the House because we're very happy to measure the target, so we know at least the quantum of the amount of money that's been spent, and we are going to be watching to see how many dollars per extra student is going to be achieved in year one from this money that's been, uh, been put out for the students. So beyond that, it's, beyond that, it's very uh, squishy indeed. I mean, there's been the family incomes package, and yes, we want money. We want money. We want money to go to the uh, families as well. And we had a pretty uh, impressive tax package that actually was giving tax cuts to hard working New Zealanders. So I'm really concerned about these hard working... Yeah, it's all gone. It's all being spent. 
There are also no numbers around this regional development uh, provincial growth fund. So we keep hearing lots of promises. We keep hearing about the quantum of the fund. We're still not sure uh, how some of this is going to be applied, and we're still not sure that some of what had already been committed to is not in this, in this provincial growth fund. So I have some serious questions, because when the National Party was in government, we had a whole string of towns that had been promised uh, ultra-fast broadband. We also had a rural broadband initiative in place, and I've got a string of towns in my electorate, as will other people, where this rural broadband was going to go. And uh, the Honourable Claire Curran was often in the House getting up going, how are you going to do it? Too slow, too slow. It's not coming. It's not happening. Now we've actually got the Honourable Claire Curran up there still waiting to appoint a group that's, you know, there's groups and more groups and more inquiries. And I've got questions. In fact, I've written letters to that minister from some of my communities asking when that, uh, when that rural broadband initiative is going to be put in place. We've also uh, been told that there will be extra police numbers. We've been told that there'll be rural constabularies established. Now, as a rural MP, I would be really happy if rural security was beefed up. But again, in all of these things, um, and no reference in this document to these commitments in terms of additional money. So we would really like to know how much, how it's going to happen, it's all very well to make these promises. And as I said before, the last speaker talks about what they've done. So far, this government has done nothing other than make a few promises. And, and there's three things that they've committed to that they've actually physically done something about. And one of them is going to result in no extra result. The other thing that I'm quite interested is... Um, the other thing that I'm quite interested in is that um, the Agriculture Minister has uh, said that he's going to look at uh, the splitting up of the Ministry for Primary Industries. And I've seen some figures on what that might cost, depending on options and ways and things to do that. I would suggest instead of actually looking at, uh, you know, putting stickers on doors and uh, that type of operation, perhaps some of that money would be better spent on getting rid of the stink bug. We have got farmers down in Southland who are screaming out at our local Member of Parliament for Clutha Southland down there, Hamish Walker, every day. They have uncertainty. They have uncertainty about whether it's eradication, whether it's containment. They have uncertainty about whether they're going to get some compensation. And for the amount of questions we ask, we are certainly not uh, getting any answers. And the other thing I'd like to, this government to commit to is that I've heard a lot of things in this House this afternoon about swimmable water. And whenever we talk about swimmable water, we set those targets back on our rural communities. And I'm going to say right here and now, that is not only a rural community issue. And while Christmas and New Year might have gone by um, in this whole 100-day process and we're not getting many answers, there was a lot of noticeable things um, around the cities and particularly around the city of Auckland um, over that Christmas period around water. Now, I'm not pointing any fingers here, and I'm not making any accusations in terms of any particular people, but we have an issue in this country of New Zealand that we have to tackle. And I'm just wondering where in these budget policy states, statements, when everyone on that side of the House is getting up and talking about swimmable water, how are we going to measure that? How are we going to get swimmable water on our beaches in Auckland? And how much is that going to cost? So let's not talk about what we've done and what this government's done in this budget policy statement, because to date, very little has been done. There are still 29 risks that we're waiting to, um, to see the government overcome. And, uh, and I would suggest that some of those uh, environmental issues that have been brought up today are going to be some of the most difficult ones to cover off. And I would like to see some more targets, measures, and certainty how we do that as a whole country, uh, all together 
And um, with that, I would like to say, uh, Mr. Speaker, it's uh, my uh, pleasure to speak on this bill, and I'm very pleased to be opposing it today. Thank you. Well done, Barbara. Mr. Speaker, I call Kieran McAnulty. It's an absolute 